Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Ruby reading. I know it's been a while, and I've been pretty much just pushing off recording and all that. But, uh, welcome back, and, um, I'm actually doing this because I got a couple of comments. And I'd like to say thank you to those, even though I haven't replied to them because I'm bad at replying and that sort of thing. But thank you, um, for tuning in. But now we're going to be doing chapter 42, Infiltration. And, uh. Oh! I should probably, before I start, I should probably kind of explain myself, what, like, why my schedule is so bad for uploading. I really do this as, like, a side thing. I, do, I really don't prioritize it over everything. And I kind of do it kind of for fun. I felt like I could do something. And, uh. Yeah. But I'm honestly getting bored of the story. Like, I've already read it, I already know what's going on, and going through the chapters, like, I really don't have any real drive to do it. Um, another thing about, like, me reading it is it has been a long time, so me, like, knowing what's, like, what everything is about um, can be good because I can say it more fluently, but it's not like I've recently reread any of it, so it's like I still mess everything up. But my birthday was uh, the 20th, and uh, I did have a birthday, part or, uh, a birthday party, I think, the next day. And uh, so that was a thing. And um, I start school next Wednesday. So I start it, when is it? Yeah. I start the 27th. I have little to no time. Um, I mean, I'll probably still try and record. I mean, I do these whenever. Um, it'll definitely probably be more midday than uh, doing it at like nine and then having to watch it render and all that and it being uploaded at midnight and then put on private until the next day. But I don't know, with this, I'll probably honestly render it out and just straight up upload it because I owe you guys and I really need to get my ass in gear and just finish this thing move on to different things i'm looking into buying a roxio game capture and i want to get the hd one um i do i want to live stream i want to live stream games i want to capture gameplay because this is not what i'm good at um or where you see me um i play video games i'm a gamer and i like all that stuff but I really do want to find a way so that way I can capture games and stuff. Like, um, when I'm on uh, the PS3. Uh, but yeah, when I'm on the PS3, like, I play with that. And I was thinking, like, me and my friend have been playing zombies lately. And I was like, dude, we could stream this, but no way to capture that and put that up. And it's not like it's great A content. Like, it's amazing and pro, but it's, like chill you know, that's pretty much it like me and my friend recently just played uh, the Nuketown Zombies for Black Ops 2 and we haven't played that map in a long time we made it to 29 ooh but it, it was like hey we did it on a map we haven't like touched on a long ass time but nearly four minutes into the video and I haven't started reading it I'm reading the story so we have actually quite a bit to go. We're at the point where I don't have to scroll, and you can see chapter 42 and everything else that I need to read. Um, a lot of the chapters are the same length. So, I guess that's a good thing. But, um, I am working on something. It's mainly, I might just upload it. <laughs> it it's... I don't know, it's something that I find hilarious and I'm like honestly like freaking out about it. it's gonna be something I do for a talent show for school when that comes around again, which will be like next year. I think the the high school I go to the talent show is like near the end of the year or like two months or three before we end up leaving. We were done. But without further ado, with that awesome Pokemon music, which by the way is brought to you by Glitch X City and other remixers that I have 
Um, I'm now using Pokemon music instead of Dawn of War music because sometimes it actually fit the mood. Because actually, if you go to chapter 41 and you know Pokemon music or the person who makes it, Glitch X City, you'll know the theme or like uh, the name of the song and every every track that came up corresponded to what was going on. I'm not sure we're gonna have that luck again, but it was pretty legit. So. Let's do this. Chapter 42, Infiltration, Part 2. Ruby's first reaction was to immediately start struggling, trying trying to the pry the hand away from her throat. She was surprised when the knife sunk into her stomach and two hands grabbed her shoulders, flipping her around and slamming her head into the table again. Cold still snapped into place around her wrist, her hands now handcuffed behind her. Realizing that starting an all-out fight was probably a bad decision in the middle of a small town, Ruby tempt, tempt down her raging aura, going limp, the hands still holding her down. Wait, she gasps, coughing out a little bit. I won't hurt you, I promise. The fuck? The voice said. I'm not scared of you hurting me. Why aren't you dead yet? Um, Ruby said. Could you not shout? I'm trying to avoid being detected. The pressure on her back lifted, and Ruby slowly turned herself around, seeing a shadowy figure back from, back away from her, grabbing a lantern and switching it on, setting it down on the table next to her, to a folder of documents. Ruby blinked a little, her eyes adjusting to the sunlight. A rabbit bonnet stood in front of her, with deep blue hair and scarlet eyes. She was quite a bit taller than Ruby, wearing a fluffy white night robe and slippers. Youthful appearance belied her world wary eyes that were full of mistrust and suspicion. Her hair was let down, the shimmers of blue cascading below her shoulders. What are you doing in my house? she demanded, going to the kitchen counter and pulling out another knife. I'm going to stab you again if you try to lie to me. We beat that for a second, not really wanting to be stabbed. Do you know anyone named Mark? she finally said. What? Never heard of him. That wasn't an answer. Rabbit Fauna said, walking towards her. Okay, wait, 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 Ruby said, panicking a little. I just wanted to see what was behind these walls, and whatever or not I can get into contact with Mark. The Rabbit Fauna stopped. Are you the new arrival? The one that's supposed to be staying outside of New Haven? New Haven, Ruby said, incuriously. That's this town's name? The rabbit grimaced. Yeah, yeah, I didn't make that decision. Anyways, we're getting off topic. I lost my place. Oh! Found it. No, this is like retarded now. She noticed the knife sticking out of Ruby's stomach, blood dripping down her leg and pooling on the tiled floor. Let me remove the knife so you stop bleeding all over my kitchen, she said, walking towards Ruby and pulling the knife out. Isn't that what you asked me if I'm okay? Ruby said, frowning a little. And do you mind wrapping something over it? I'm bleeding even more now. The blood flow had increased after the knife had been taken out. Ruby had her hands bound behind her. The rabbit found us moved to a cabinet, opening it up and rummaging through it. I heard you are a monster, she said. Rumors have been spreading, and I don't know how true they are. But you seem to be dealing just fine with a stab room. Pulling out a pristine white towel, she looked at it for a second and put it back, eventually finding a rag of cloth. So what's your name? Ruby asked as the rabbit tied the rag around her midsection, stemming the blood flow and keeping her insides in place. Call me Maya, she said, stepping back and taking a good look at Ruby. You don't look like a monster, Maya said curiously. Thanks, I guess, Ruby said, glad that Maya wasn't calling for help. But why are you wearing so little? I asked. I'm pretty sure those rolls of steel seek are the only things holding your dress together. Ruby blushed, realizing how tattered she looked. Combat skirt, Ruby said, correcting her. And I haven't had any need for clothing. The cloth doesn't really affect me much. But these clothes are a sentimental value. Maya raised an eyebrow. Back to the topic. Why shouldn't I just arrest you right now and put you into prison? You can't arrest me, Ruby said. Maya nodded. I'm a police officer. Where do you think I got those handcuffs from? No answer the question. Well, I haven't hurt anyone, Ruby offered. Uh-huh. 
Maya said, unconvinced. And so you sneaked into my house because I wanted someone to talk to? This conversation is useless, Maya said, frowning. I'm going to bring you in and then the council can make a decision. Ruby looked around desperately, growing along. But, but you can't, she said, trying to balance herself with her arms behind her back. Then they won't let me live in here. Not my problem, Maya said, walking towards her. I have bigger issues to deal with. Seeing that she had no choice, Ruby fled hard, tugging her wrists apart, her bones brushing and cracking a little, the metal groaning, and she snapped the handcuffs in half. Two metal bracelets around her wrists. Maya backed away, startled. What the fu- Ruby blinked forward in a swirl of rose petals, slamming a fist into her stomach and smashing a palm into her temple, dropping her to the floor. Maya was now slumped sideways on the ground, her robe spread to the side, giving Ruby a nice view of her long legs and shaped bottom. After a few seconds, Ruby managed to pull herself away from the site and tell herself to think, wondering what she could do now. Killing the fauna is way too much suspicion, Ruby decided, crouching down and stroking Maya's legs, a smooth skin like silk underneath her fingers, especially because she was a police woman. Ruby stood up walking toward the lantern that was illuminating the room, remembering the pile of documents beside it. She, sef she sifted through them, opening them up and skimming them quickly, knowing that Maya would probably come, it come to in a minute or so. She hadn't hit her that hard, and she, her sturdy fondness constriction. The documents seemed to contain information on cases with names and times and places highlighted a few things marked important or keep away from sheriff. So she took the entire folder, pulling a few towels out of the closet and wiping the floor up, typing it and taping it to her shoulder. Maya was staring, so Ruby crouched next to her, shaking her head. Shaking her. Maya's eyes blinked wide open. My bleh, bleh, bleh. Maya's eyes blinked wide open, staring at Ruby. What? Ruby said, placing a finger over her lips. I took the documents on your table. Her hunch that the documents were important was confirmed when Maya immediately tried to stand up. Her motor skills not yet fully recovered at the knockout. Wait, she, she pleaded. Don't take those. Sorry, but I'll give them back when I know you won't report me, Ruby said, standing up. I probably won't be coming back for a while, so don't even think about trying to set me up. Taping a ri long ribbon of soul sleep to the end of her scythe, Ruby stepped out of the window and jumped to the floor. Maya still trying to get up, swinging her scythe on the end of the ribbon. Ruby threw it upwards in an arc and bending it to the side of the wall. She immediately jumped up and began climbing, Ooh. pulling her stuff up using the ribbon. She quickly made her way to the top, not looking behind her, running across the walkway. She didn't even bother to anchor her scythe before jumping down, slamming into the bank of snow and absorbing the impact across her body. Making sure that her midsection wound had opened and spilled her organs everywhere, Ruby began to run, retracing the footsteps she had made in the snow. Hopefully, the large amount of walking she had done in the past day would help disguise her tracks and let them blend into the surroundings. Dogman thumped against her shoulder as she ran, Ruby slow slowing down when she reached the forest, making sure that nothing had spilled out. As she walked back to camp, she took out a roll of steel so they can use part of it to further wrap the towel and case folder, making sure it was waterproof before shoving it under a bank of snow at her campsite. The handcuffs took a while to remove, Ruby eventually just taking her scythe and slicing them in pieces. Ruby ate a bit of the preserved vegetables and jerky the Fonus had given her, and then set up another stand to make her own jerky. Nothing that she would probably have to hunt again any sometime soon. It was already very late, most of the night gone due to her excursion. So Ruby finished her meal and immediately went to sleep, wrapping her cloak around herself. Ruby woke up the next morning expecting to see Fauna surrounding her campsite and demanding her return of the documents, but nothing happened. The air nice and peaceful. Ruby lay back down, still a little sleepy, and dozed off again. It was already past noon when she woke up again, yawning and stretching. 
clipping her cloak her cloak back into place. Taking the jerky down from the, sh the stand, she munched on the dried meat as she pulled the bundle of documents out from under the snow. Carefully spreading her cloak under herself, she sat down on it and set down the documents, unwrapping the steel sleek and the towels. She spread the sheets of paper out, beginning to read through them. The papers were police reports and evidence along with some of Maya's own notes and conclusions. We read through the reports, realizing that Maya had been gathering evidence and testimonies on all the assaults and thefts that had occurred since New Haven's founding. Names are circled in timestamps were, under were underlined with pen and marker, each outlined thing written down on a map of the overall settlement. Rumming rummaging around the pile, Ruby caught sight of a thick piece of paper, playing out and unfolding it. The paper flipped open to reveal a large tree of rectangular boxes, indicating a structure of command with a few spaces at the top and an increasing amount of space at the bottom. bottom. There were many blanks and dead ends, indicating faunas that, witness that witnesses had seen but were unable to identify. A notepad was filled with neat structured thoughts, with plenty of strike throughs and lines drawn to connect ideas. Most of it was gibberish to Ruby as she didn't know any of the names and places mentioned, but there were a lot of statements indicating that Maya was recently becoming frustrated and unable to make progress. Ruby wasn't even done with half of the folded by the time the sun had set, an entire afternoon spent reading and thinking about the contents of the documents. It was too dark to read now, so Ruby carefully rearranged the documents back into order. Wrapping them into place with steel seek and then covering them with towels and another layer of steel seek. Carefully stashing the folder in another bank of snow, Ruby put her cloak back on and stood up, yawning and stretching. Setting up a campfire, she cooked the last bit of her frozen meal frozen meat, eating a hot meal and warmed some snow, drinking it. She wondered if she could ask Maya for uh. a burp. Excuse me. She could ask Maya for some spices and tea, as she was getting a little bored of eating plain raw flesh and drinking stale water. I thought eating raw flesh was the best flesh for her. Hmm. The Beowulves arrived some time later, crowding around Ruby and jumping on her. We played them. Played with them. Wrestling and tussling, throwing trunks of trees into the air for them to catch. If Ruby had thrown them around sufficiently, the Beowulves melted back into the forest, going off to do Beowulf things, because, you know, Beowulves do Beowulves things. Ruby dusted herself off, making a mental note to go hunting the next morning. The night was cool, but still warmer than before, the weather shifting to early spring. However, there was still a lot of residual snow, and the temperatures weren't yet warm enough to melt it. So the snows. The snow formed a crusty layer on the top, with a softer ice beneath. Not wanting to further damage her clothing, Ruby took the aerial route, leaping through the trees as she retracted her path from the previous night. Whoa. The moon was less bright tonight, a few clouds drifting over it and obscuring its light. Hey. Making sure to perfectly retrace her footsteps, Ruby made her way across the cleaning, clearing to the previous indentions she had carved in the wall, looking around to make sure that there weren't any guards at the top. She didn't need her sight as she climbed up the wooden structure, instead just slipping her fingers into the slices she had made and quickly climbing her way up, sometimes skipping a few handholds. To the top of the wall, Ruby looked around carefully, wondering if Maya had set up any traps for her. Seeing that the coast was clear, she did that. She did the same repelling trick, softly landing on the roof of Maya's place. Just come in already, came a voice. You do realize that I can hear you, right? Ruby scrambled off of the house, jumping to the ground and going to the front of the door, knocking. The dirt sheet was deserted at the, this time of the night, all the other houses dark and quiet. Maya opened the door, motioning for her to come in. Her chest was covered with black bulletproof vests, 
and she wore a dark blue long sleeve enforcer jacket and matching dress pants. A black leather belt wrapped around her waist, two holstered pistols, a pouch, and a police radio attached to it. Her hair was in behind a blue peak hat that was rimmed with black, completing the ensemble. Well, come on in, Maya said impatiently as Ruby cautiously poked her head into the room. Ruby stepped through the doorway and spun around, facing Maya and putting a hand on her side. I'm not going to, I'm not going to arrest you, all right, Maya said. I need those documents back, and I don't know where you've hidden them. Seeing that Ruby was still on the defensive, Maya unclipped her belt and set it onto the table with a clunk. Better? Ruby nodded, moving her hand away from her weapon and straining out her cloak. <laughs> yawn, yawn, yawn. What do you want for the documents, Maya asked, and give you my promise not to turn you in, but I doubt you trust me. An oath of internal loyalty would be quip quipped. Maya frowned, taping her feet in unamused. Did you say you weren't going to come back tonight, she called. We thought for a moment. Well, I read through the documents, and if I'm not mistaken, you're trying to gather evidence to convict some people, right? You read through them? Maya exclaimed. You damage anything. No, no, they're perfectly fine, Ruby assured her. I was just wondering, why would you be doing something like this? What do you mean? Maya said in innocently. I'm a police officer. This is my job. But some of the writing says to keep the papers away from the sheriff and you keep writing about corruption in the police department. We pointed out. Maya sagged a little. I guess that was a little too obvious. She admitted. So, Ruby prodded. Maya took a breath, letting it out. There's been an unusually high amount of crimes in New Haven ever since its founding, she explained. I only got here a few months ago, and I noticed that a lot of cases have been closed, even though the per perpetrators are still in blottings and haven't been found. So you decided to investigate? Maya nodded. I started working in secret, gathering the evidence and asking around about what had happened. A lot of people were willing to talk to me, and so I found out that the investigators had simply ignored all the evidence they had been given. At this point, I realized that the people who were committing crimes had connections to the police. Now you're going to find evidence, give it to the people like Vincent, and arrest them over the barbed or bribed officers, right? Ruby concluded, growing excited. No, Maya said, shaking her head. Doesn't work like that. The police force is already pretty small. If I had all the corrupted people leave, then we'd be left with nothing. We'd be deflated. What are you going to do? She asked. Maya debated with us with herself for a moment. Oh fuck it, she sighed. I'll tell you everything, and you'll give me the me the documents back. All right. Only if you let me help. You, Ruby said stubbornly. Why would you want to help? Ruby asked, surprised. I want to prove that I can be a good person and that they'll let me live here with actual people, Ruby said. It's really boring living outside. You want to help us because you're bored, Maya said incondoriously. And because I want to be a better person, Ruby reminded her, but you're not even allowed to be in here. That hasn't stopped me, has it? But I can just sneak around during the night. I'll be stealthy, I promise. Maya thought for a second. Well, you are strong, and I, c I could use you as backup, she decided. I could just give you something to hide your face. <laughs> your face! And then you're going to need a change of clothes. Great! Ruby beamed, beginning to strip. Wait, I haven't even told you what my plan is. Ruby said <laughs> Maya said, frowning. Ruby, stop. Oh. Right. Since I can't really overturn the existing power structure, I'm going to focus on helping those people and then try to catch the perpetrators. We can follow them around and film them, and then stop them from committing crimes. Sounds good, Ruby said. Is there any anyone else who could help us? If there was anyone else, I wouldn't be accepting your help. Maya stated, stare, or stated staring at her. Arch, Ruby complained, wincing. I'm still a little reluctant about having a murderer help me. You know, no matter how desperate I am. But I haven't seen you kill anyone yet. 
I don't know if the rumors are true or not. You didn't kill me last night after you knocked me unconscious. So I'll believe you in your good intentions. For now. I have pause for a second. For effect. Aha. Also, I really need those documents. And I have a feeling you're not going to stop bothering me unless you get to do something. Yep. Ruby agreed smiling. When did everything start going so poorly? Oh. When did everything start to go so poorly? My mother taking off her bulletproof vest, setting her cap down onto the table. When you transferred here? Ruby suggested watching her. Haha. <laughs> She said, taking off her uniform, a black tank top underneath it. Ruby drooled a little as she watched her strip, quickly wiping the corner of her mouth. She wanted to stroke Mai's supple, firm body, fondling, fast, burying her nose in that brilliant blue hair. Oh shit, Mai has blue hair? That's awesome. So she sat on her hands, not willing to jeopardize the uneasy truth. I love how I just completely break the mood by going, oh shit, she has blue hair. <laughs> The fuck? Dude, that's awesome. I didn't know she had blue hair this entire time. I need to get a new drink. Can we do anything tonight? Ruby asked, trying to distract herself. Maya rummaged through the closet, shivering a little, finding a white bathroom and putting it on. She turned to Ruby, shaking her head as she undid her ponytail. Also, real quick, if I'm mispronouncing Maya's... Maya's name, please let me know how it should be pronounced, like, and don't just be like, oh, it's pronounced like Maya, and fucking type out her name, M-A-I-A, -A. like, if it's May, uh, like, you put the word May, and then, uh, you know, just let me know, just let me know in the comments below, if, uh, anything I should be pronouncing differently, or correctly, I'm gonna put quotes around that, air quotes, <laughs> okay, let's go, let go. My clothes are too long, so I'll get you some normal sized ones tomorrow, she explained. Maybe I can also get you some perfume or odor killing substance to disguise your human smell. Maya paused, leaning closer to Ruby and sniffing. That's odd, she said, a puzzled expression on her face. I can barely smell anything coming from you. It's like you don't even have a scent. You just smell. I don't know. Live? Don't ask me, Ruby said, shrugging. Giving one final sniff, Maya pulled away a thoughtful expression on her face. Well, that's going to be useful. Okay. Ruby said, trying to finalize the argument. Or, or, yeah. So we agree that if I don't tell anyone about your doing, and I return your documents, you don't report me, and I get to help you, right? Right. Or, right. Maya responded, looking around for something. Damn it, she explained. I have firewood. I have a lot. I could bring you some, Ruby offered. Maya raised an eyebrow. I'm going to carry over the wall. Ruby nodded. I'm an OR user, so it'll be easy for me. Are you an OR user? She said, or she asked. Yeah, Maya said, realizing why she wanted to know. I guess I could go with you, she speculated. I could bring back a large amount of firewood that way. Uh, wouldn't people notice if you suddenly had a huge pile of firewood in your house? be wondered. I mean, you guys aren't even allowed to go outside the walls, are you? It's fine, Maya said, dis dismissing her concerns. I'm the only one who lives here, and we can just store it in the basement. It gets really damn cold. But <laughs> Excuse me. So it'll be worth it. You want to change? Or do you want to change? Ruby asked, noticing her attire. It's pretty cold outside. Yeah, give me a second, my ass, taking off her bathroom and pulling off her dress pants. Ruby tried not to stare at her long legs, instead looking up at the ceiling. Let's go, Maya said a few seconds later. Ruby looked down, Maya was wearing a perka, snow pants, and a thick black gloves, clearly dressed for the cold. Aren't you fine it's supposed to be cold and resistant, Ruby asked, standing up. Not all of us are, and where I come from, it's sunny all year, sunny all year round. Maya explained, impatiently walking toward the door. And I hate the cold. So why'd you come here? Ruby asked. Let's take the window. Let's get onto the roof. Maya walked towards the window, following Ruby as she pulled herself up. Because I heard about the so-called New Haven and I wanted to help, she said, crawling onto the roof. 
I thought I could handle a little bit of cold weather. And besides, it's not snowy all the time. Ruby swung her scythe on a length of steel sink, anchoring it into the wall and beginning to climb, climb up. Let me go first, Ruby said. I don't know if this will hold the both of us. Maya nodded, waiting for Ruby to get on top before beginning her climb up. She was a little unsteady at first, and Ruby was afraid she would slip, but Maya eventually made it to the top, flaring her, flaring a little bit of blue aura and throwing herself over the parpet. Ruby pulled her scythe out of the wall preparing to anchor into the other side. Guard! Maya whispered furiously. What? Ruby managed to say. And Maya pulled her over the edge and they started falling. Oh, hold on, let me reread that. She goes, Guard! Maya whispered furiously. What? Ruby managed to say and then Maya pulled her over the edge and they started falling. There you have it, chapter 42, Infiltration, part 2, author's note. And that was this chapter, yay, new chapters, I love new chapters, hope you find her interesting too, I really like her content. As always, read and review, PM me, and so forth. Uh, so I think at this point, I actually started to ask, uh, Rapey Lemons if I could read her story, or if, if he, if it, is even a she or a dude, fucking whoever, the person writing the story. Um, I asked if I could, uh, if I could do readings. And it wait, was that first? No, 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 no. I think it was disguised. So it was disguised because, um, because I asked and then. I was like, okay, well, I gotta get everything set up, and then chapters are coming up. But I, I think, actually, sadly, the story is dead. This thing hasn't been updated in forever. Updated April 23rd. And so it's been a long while. It's a shame that this story isn't updated. Um, I'd really at least like some, some sort of conclusion to this story. Um... At least with this story arc of like the whole Ponish Village and Ruby side of things, like I, I couldn't give a single shit about what happened with Weiss and Elise, and how what Blake and Yang are doing to support the the village. As long as we get some sort of solid uh, ending with Ruby and her adventures uh, uh, at the Ponish Village. Then I'll be good because this story is about Ruby and this kind of this twisted version of Ruby is in Ruby Later we start to call her red spoiler We start to call her red and I think just calling her red is like the best way to go Because she really isn't the Ruby we all know and love from the series which by the way we are on volume 2 mother truckers Oh, yeah, it's so good Sadly, we didn't get an actual episode. We got a history lesson on dust. Ooh. But hopefully I can get my ass in gear and start doing these and finish up the story. Move on to other stories that aren't fucking long as shit. Um, but probably still depressing. Like the one story that I'll do um, right after it um, will be it feels heavy. And also I think what I'm going to do is I'll take breaks once the series is over and record the next one. And have that one uploaded and ready to go. So that way the series is already up in YouTube and I have it set to private. And then every day I just have to make sure I hit the publish button. And it will be there. So, yeah. Uh, let me know what you thought about this chapter. Any predictions that you want to make. Put that down in the comments below and let me know. Even if I don't respond to it, I do see it. Um, or like it. And then like if you enjoyed, share with your friends who you think will enjoy this. Um, and uh, also, if I take another hiatus like I've done, uh, be sure to just check out the story itself that I have in the description. I'll put my link to my Twitch that I mentioned at the start of the video down below. I stopped streaming because... <laughs> streaming. Blah, blah. Not the best at it. 
Let's just say that. And, uh, yeah, subscribe to be alerted when um, other videos are released. And, um, I really want to get into editing these videos and uh, try and do something a little bit more because I'm starting to see that I'm getting subscribers and I uh, I have to say thank you. Thank, to, thank you to everyone that actually looks forward to this. Well, more or less watches it and is like, oh, hey, look at this. But on a review reading, let's watch it. And, yeah. So thank you. Uh, to those people and uh, I really want to have some sort of editing software to that way like let's say 50 subs you know it, that's a, it's a milestone it is a YouTube milestone it's a small one but it is a milestone and I want to do something different I don't know it might just be a different story or like really upbeat in something completely opposite from this or a different anime series because I have two stories for Madoka Magica uh, if you don't know that anime you got suggest you go watch it because it's pretty cool and uh, I have two two stories there that I actually need to read first but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and careful in the crazy world we live in take care